Signs of an Arctic outbreak growing into portions of the United States, plus an active snow track on the way for many. Welcome in, folks. Happy Saturday, December 6th, and continuing to track a very active pattern out there for many. We've got a big shot of Arctic air becoming more likely for a big section of the country by next week, and we're going to be breaking that down for you. Also have my eyes on a very active track of atmospheric energy that is going to bring continued snow chances, and we're going to try to fill in the gaps for folks that have not seen snow yet this winter. I think some new folks could try to get in on the action uh, here over the next 10 days or so. I'll show you why in today's video. But if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. We're on the road to 60,000. We're not that far. So if you watch the videos regularly and you're not subscribed, just go ahead and do it. It's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. All it does is help me continue running this channel uh, for free like I currently do and giving you all of the uh, free weather knowledge that uh, you can get here at your fingertips every day with YouTube. All right, let's dive right on into it and give you the latest. We'll start with what's next to me and everything is brand new hot off the press data here coming in from our afternoon computer models this is the European ensembles and one of our more reliable tools that we use for uh, really forecasting any type of weather but especially winter weather and snowfall and you can see this is the chance of or I should say this is the mean snow accumulation uh, over a 24-hour period that's why you see these swaths of snow being laid over the next 10 days and you can see where that active track is coming down out of Canada a lot of clipper systems and that's going to really up snowfall chances through the Midwest the interior Northeast the um, Appalachian chain and potentially the mid-Atlantic and coastal Northeast I've got my eyes on a time frame that could become more favorable for you over this pattern you can see it right there uh, whenever another swath of snow right around seven or so days from now looks to be late it's not just that folks uh, we've got a very big piece of upper level energy in the atmosphere that looks to dive down you see the good old snow miser colors here on your map this is by next week and watch this come down out of Canada you get one little shot of cold air there in blue and then a bigger shot of cold air showing up on uh, a lot of our computer data today and that's all of those pink and uh, purplish colors that's Arctic air spilling into the eastern United States as shown here by the afternoon European ensembles and this becoming a higher likelihood to occur with that you're also going to obviously bring in very cold temperatures so check it out on the European run we've got one shot of uh, cold air working in these are temperature anomalies so the blue and purplish colors those are uh, how below average the temperatures are and you can see some numbers in here as early as Monday 20 to 30 degrees cooler than we should be this time of year into portions of the Ohio Valley and Northeast but check it out right around seven days from now absolute uh, hammer gets dropped here into the eastern U.S. this is by a week from today next Saturday into Sunday frigid Arctic air spilling in and storm energy with it so does that mean we could get some snow potentially but even before we get a week from now I'm already tracking a system bringing snow let me give you the latest on that while a lot of folks are looking into the future for snow, we've got some snow out there right now. If you're up into Iowa, northern Illinois, Indiana, southern Wisconsin, much of the Midwest and the interior northeast, you've got snow on the way as early as now through tomorrow. And then also watching a sneaky little setup for some snow in North Carolina and Virginia. Let me show it to you. So here's that first piece of energy, a classic Alberta clipper diving down out of, yeah, you guessed it, Alberta, low pressure beginning to form and throwing back moisture into this already uh, very cold boundary we have kind of draped across the country, kind of around this line or so. Anything to the south is a bit warmer. Anything to the north is quite cold. And uh, we're already feeling that Arctic chill with or without that next blast to come that we've been alluding to. Here we go, though. Uh, this evening, snow into Iowa, into Des Moines, Davenport, eventually overnight tonight, snow into Chicago, southern uh, Wisconsin. I think a pretty good band of heavy snow could get going in here as well. By tomorrow morning, waking up, we've got snow uh, falling into northern Indiana, southern uh, Wisconsin, uh, starting to taper off there, but uh, snowing into southern Michigan, into portions of northern Ohio. By tomorrow afternoon, scattered snow showers and squalls working into the interior of the northeast. So, yeah, a pretty uh, snowy day for a lot of folks, uh, really now into tonight and into tomorrow, I think we're going to begin to notice that snow really starting to crank up. Now, as you go further ahead into time, you can see here by the time we get into Monday morning, a new piece of energy, kind of a combination of what brought that Alberta clipper with a little bit of southern stream energy getting going here. That's going to bring the potential for some snow into Virginia once again, maybe even northern North Carolina. Let me time it out for you. So Arctic air is spilling south of this point, or at least polar air, cold air nonetheless. 
And uh, we hear some of that uh, energy working in. Looks like all rain here Monday morning or just some light scattering into Charlotte, Greensboro, Greenville, Spartanburg, Raleigh, much of South Carolina. But notice some overlapping and some combination of that energy getting going with this coastal low and a short wave here into the mid-levels. It could get a band of snow into southern West Virginia, into Virginia itself, portions of Kentucky. Could even get down into northern North Carolina. I could see Greensboro, maybe even uh, southeastern Virginia, northeast North Carolina, trying to get some flakes to mix in here by Monday p.m. and overnight. Check it out. By the time the sun is setting Monday, this model, the Argen model, even wants to get some light snow breaking out towards Greenville, North Carolina, Elizabeth City, Virginia Beach. Um, out towards uh, the Triangle of North Carolina and then continues uh, to kind of slide that south and offshore. And by the time that we're getting up Tuesday, really starting to dry out. But you notice more clipper energy to the north. So a couple areas of potential snow here into the near term. How much could fall? Well, let me break it down for you with the latest forecast on potential snowfall accumulation. In terms of snowfall totals, this could be a sneaky little system for uh, portions of the Midwest overnight tonight and into tomorrow. This is the National Weather Service forecast. I buy it pretty well. A good band of three to six plus inches, some folks four to eight here into Iowa uh, and even into uh, northern Illinois. So while not a blockbuster storm, especially for this part of the country, a nice little clipper that's going to continue to keep the snow uh, or the uh, ground white, I should say. And the longer we keep getting these and uh, the deeper we get into December with more shots of cold air, very well could be looking at a white Christmas up into this part of the country, at least in terms of snowfall on the ground. Obviously, we'll see if it's flying by Christmas, but nonetheless, a nice swath of snow. Chicago, probably around uh, three to five inches of snow, and then the highest total is going to be back into Iowa. Uh, but even southern Michigan, a good one to three inches out of this could clip even into northern Indiana and northern Ohio with some accumulating snow before all is said and done. Same system going to work into the interior northeast, uh, upstate New York into the Tug Hill, into uh, the Adirondacks, uh, a good two to four plus inches out of this. That could even get into northern uh, Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and into the heart of Maine over the next 48 hours, and even some snow out towards Buffalo and Erie. Once again, no snow for the I-95 out of this event, but again, like I said, don't go anywhere if you're watching from that part of the country. I'm going to talk about you here in just a moment towards the end of the video. What about further south? Now, I showed you that model earlier that looked uh, mighty good for portions of the Mid-Atlantic with some potential snow. It's not a slam dunk, though. It's a bit of a tricky forecast here. So I think for now, out into this part of the country, let's look at the probabilistic forecast, meaning what are the odds snow even flies in the first place? Well, this is the chance of just seeing some snowfall, basically, that maybe tries to stick to the grass. Pretty good up towards Galix and into Boom, uh, into Mount Airy, towards uh, the Danville area. Those uh, regions running about a 50 to 60% chance of seeing accumulating snowfall out of this system. Uh, but uh, even up into southern uh, portions of West Virginia, pretty good chance of snow. Back into Kentucky could get some snow out of this. Where it gets a little bit more tricky is the triad into Raleigh, into Emporia, back out towards Virginia Beach and Elizabeth City. That's where this has a bit of a boom and a bust ceiling. The floor is absolutely nothing happens at all, but there is a world where you could get some accumulating snow. If you look at the chance of getting an inch of snow out of this event, I'll change our graphic here to show uh, the probability of an inch of snow falling. It becomes much more isolated here to the higher terrains, the high country, Ash, Watauga, Avery County, into North Carolina, towards Galix, Pulaski, into Roanoke, and uh, Bluefield, that general region. Uh, not overly high, but I'd be pretty, um, I wouldn't be surprised, I should say, if places like Boone and uh, the high country of North Carolina especially pick up a couple of inches, or at least an inch or so out of this event, could even extend into the mountains of southwest Virginia, but becomes a lot less likely that we have a big impact event out of this into Greensboro, Raleigh, out towards Elizabeth City. I would watch, though, in terms of uptrending this, some places that could get uh, maybe a little bit better than this map right now would lead you to believe. Obviously, the areas that are already highlighted, but I would also watch out here into northeastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. If that coastal low can crank up a little bit more, we could throw back more precipitation into that cold air, and we could get another pocket of higher totals, or just a higher chance, I should say, of at least the grass getting coated, or maybe even getting some small accumulations on those elevated surfaces. Not a slam dunk forecast, but I have seen these sorts of events overperform many times. So definitely something that uh, I'd keep an eye on. All right, that's snowfall potential here in the near term. Let's talk about the medium and long range now. Again, Arctic air and energy. Does that mean snow? Well, potentially. Let's talk about it. Here's some of the big changes we've seen in the model data. It looks like an Arctic shot of air or a big trough is going to dive down into the eastern United States. Here's the GFS ensembles 
right for next weekend. Notice where we get this big placement, this big block of blue that starts to work in. Uh, parked right over the eastern U.S., diving as south as trying to get towards the Gulf, but definitely the Midwest, the Northeast, and Mid-Atlantic look to be into the heart of this system. As that's happening, we've got a bit of a ridge spiking up here into, I guess I should probably draw that with an actual ridge symbol, which would be a zigzag. There you go, zigzag arrow, even better. We've got a ridge spiking out west. You've also got a bit of a ridge up in here into Alaska. You've got a very small, weak ridge into Greenland. I think right now cold air is likely. If you want a higher chance of snowfall, though, what you really want is you want this ridge out here to really start to connect up into Alaska. You want to kind of get rid of this troughing right in here. You also want a bigger ridge up into Greenland. That would shoot the cold air south and east into the eastern U.S. and keep it into place. Now, while it's not a perfect look right now for that, here's the good news. And the screen's going to flash here for a couple times, so keep that in mind. Uh, maybe close your eyes for a second if you need to. Uh, but all right, here we go. Let me show you the trend though. How have we trended? Here's the run from a couple runs ago. Here's a newer run, newer, newer, and you get the idea. You keep going. The trend has been to keep this a little bit more locked into place and shift it a little bit further south and west, meaning the trough is digging deeper, bringing that shot of cold air for more people and amplifying to become a bit stronger. Uh, that's important because that means higher likelihood of cold air. That means more people would get in on the cold air. And that means energy would dig a bit further south and maybe have a little bit more time to ramp up and maybe connect into an actual storm. Do any of the models show that? Well, some of them. Let me show it to you and then we'll break down the probabilities with the ensembles of getting some snow out of this shot of cold air. Well, speaking on that energy a little bit more, like I said, I feel pretty confident it's going to be on the way. If we move this ahead into time, you can see we've got these shots of energy that are already working into the eastern U.S. Here's the Monday system uh, you can see kind of showing up here that could bring some of that winter weather to Virginia and parts of North Carolina. Uh, that kind of, again, though, it's very progressive. It's in here and it's out of here. What we need is a big trough to work in and kind of get stalled up. You can see by Wednesday of this coming week, another Alberta Clipper-like system, but by by the time we get to that next piece of energy, notice how it really starts to dig south. What we need though, if we want snow, is we need it to one, dig even more, and slow down and start to tilt a bit more negative. Right now, a lot of the models struggling to do that with it, but if we can trend that way a little bit more like we have already, we could be in for something a little bit more exciting. What could the next week potentially look like here, uh, according to the European model? Here is the Monday system. You can see maybe a little bit of uh, some snowflakes, some light snow breaking out over Virginia and uh, kind of I-40 North in North Carolina. Could even get into northeastern North Carolina there. Then another uh, clipper system works on through. Here comes a stronger clipper system by Wednesday. Uh, I would even watch for some brief blizzard conditions out of this into portions of the Midwest. Uh, but uh, it's another one of those, the rich get richer. Minnesota, Wisconsin, maybe Iowa, Michigan continue to get... Uh, the good looks out of that same thing for the interior northeast but then here's the one i'm really watching this is by next friday next thursday into friday specifically a system that starts to dive further south thanks to that shot of cold air moving further south could this bring a band of snow to the mid-atlantic again maybe the ohio valley and can it try to ride up the coast that's the big question doesn't fully do it on the european but some of the models have been flirting with it one of those models is the GFS. What does it show? Well, here's the Monday system. The GFS already, uh, you know, kind of off its rocker a little bit compared to the uh, maybe more reasonable European trying to get snow further south and a little bit more amplified into North Carolina and Virginia. We'll see. It missed on the last storm a little bit. The European did much better on that one, so I'd lean more towards the European. But it does show these Clipper systems working on in, bringing snowfall chances. Then here comes the bigger one, stronger, and uh, it starts to amplify a little bit more and tries to get snow into even coastal sections of the Northeast. It's mighty close in Philly, tries to get snow in New York City. I know I've got a lot of you up there begging for snow. Same thing in Connecticut, Rhode Island, coastal uh, New England up towards uh, Massachusetts. You can see some of that snow work on in, at least on this model run. And yeah, it looks better and then brings the boom with that big shot of Arctic air and uh, continues to try to get these little coastal systems to ramp up. That's what it looks like on the operational models. Obviously, a lot to figure out there, but what we can look at are the ensembles, and yeah, not half bad looking, all things considered. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. 
The chances of snow falling, well, obviously I like to look at the European ensembles to start. We'll show it to you. Here's our current clipper system. Obviously high chance of getting at least an inch of snow within a 24 hour period as this map shows there into the Midwest and the interior Northeast. Here's the Monday system. It's trended up a bit on the European, especially into Virginia now where uh, obviously the higher terrains of Southwest Virginia, Southern West Virginia, and the high country of North Carolina having the best probability, but could even see flakes fly further east into Virginia and north of I-40 in North Carolina. Then comes another clipper. You can see by the middle of the week, I think that'll be big for the Midwest and the interior Northeast. Here comes the next system though, and notice how chances get much further south and closer to the coast here by next weekend. This would be Friday. Uh, you know, running not a half bad, 40% chance of snow in Philly. Uh, same thing for northern New Jersey, New York City, 30 to 40% chance. Uh, and into Boston, uh, kind of the same general idea there. But this is the time frame to watch and the region to watch, I'd say. This would be by next Friday. Can the Northeast and Coastal Northeast get in on action? Can portions of the Appalachian chain, again, kind of high country northbound, can the Ohio Valley get in on something? It's a possibility, not a guarantee, but with a lot of cold air, if we can slow it down a little bit and let the energy really ramp up with the cold air, could get a coastal storm. As I've said many times, not a guarantee, but something I'm watching. GFS Ensemble's final thing I'll leave you with. Here's the Monday system. A lot more excited for North Carolina on the GFS than the European is. Something to watch. We'll see if it trends that way, but I'd lean towards the European right now over uh, that solution. Uh, here comes the Clipper midweek. Like I said, it'll likely bring some snow. And then here comes next weekend. Notice a lot more people get in on the chance at least, but plenty to iron out here in the details. Alrighty, folks. Well, that's all I've got for you in today's video. Uh, we're going to continue to keep tracking things, but just to quickly summarize, we've got a clipper system now. We've got maybe some sneaky mid-Atlantic snow on Monday, another clipper system for a lot of the same folks by this coming Wednesday, and then watching early next weekend for big shot of Arctic air and potentially snow chances once again. Alrighty, y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there. Stay warm. And uh, let's all keep our fingers crossed for some snow as we continue to take advantage of this very active winter pattern.